What up, YouTube? It's your boy Two Hat Mikey here, and welcome to Weekend Weird. I'm I, I'm just kidding. It's actually it's actually Gibby. It's it's me. If you're new here, we go over the weirdest stories of the week, and seeing as the Super Bowl happened last night, uh, this this video is a little late. But that's not gonna stop us from having some fun. Speaking of fun, here here's a terrifying story from USA Today. Denise Holt woke up in her home in Lincolnwood, Illinois in the early hours of Sunday morning and saw a naked man holding scissors. The man allegedly threatened to cut her if she screamed and got into bed with her. He later locked her in a bathroom in her basement. Holt told the Washington Post she was cold, hungry, and in pain while trapped, as the man allegedly would not bring her food or medicine. The Lincolnwood Police Department confirmed that the suspect had allegedly discarded his clothing early Sunday morning during a mental health crisis before breaking into the woman's home. He collected the phones in the home and secured the door to the woman's bathroom with a chair. You ready for the twist? While Holt was trapped and worried for her safety, her oldest daughter in California was growing concerned that her mom had not texted her her Wordle score. I didn't send my older daughter a wordle in the morning, and that was disconcerting to her, Holt told CBS2. Her daughters eventually asked police to do a wellness check, and the officers discovered a broken window on the first floor of Holt's home at approximately 9.40pm on Sunday. They freed her from the bathroom and notified the regional SWAT team, and they apprehended the man at approximately 3am on Monday. That's right folks, wordle can save your life. If you somehow don't know what wordle is, then um... What's the opposite of touch grass? Touch, touch internet? Touch keyboard? Besides the Super Bowl, the Olympic Games are also happening. And uh, we got this headline from the NZ Herald. Beijing Winter Olympics 2022. Chinese soldier accidentally gets stuck under Olympics flag in hilarious mishap. I think I'll be the judge about if something's hilarious or not. Okay, that, okay, that, that was good. <laughs> I'll give it to you, NZ Herald, that, 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 yes, yes, that was hilarious. Speaking of hilarious, we have what is probably the most ironic event of this young year so far. So there's a comedian named Heather McDonald, and she was on stage doing her comedy act. Her, 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 her joke at the time was, was about how healthy she was. She was talking about how she was, uh, vaxxed and boosted for COVID how she had traveled all around the world to do her shows, and how she had yet to be infected. She was talking about how great her health was for someone her age. And then, and then this immediately happened right after. I don't mean to brag, I don't care, but I want you to know, double vaxxed, booster, flu shot, and I'm gonna be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period, what? Yes! Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. She did have to go to the hospital, but apparently it wasn't too bad. She's apparently in good spirits about it. She's the one who released the video and is uh, now joking about it online. As Page Six points out, she said, Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously, so nice, so nice, she joked right before hitting the floor. Perhaps it was a message from the big man. <laughs> Honestly, part of me is legitimately convinced that she intended for the joke to end with her falling because the audience laughs right after she falls because... It, it makes a perfect sense for it to be the end of the joke. So I think it's possible that she hit her head by accident and is now playing it off as her fainting. Uh, but it's also funnier if she was just fainting. <laughs> now you've almost certainly heard this story if you've been online over the last week. Russia sentences teens over terrorist plot to blow up Minecraft building. Specifically, it's the Federal Security Services building, the FSB building. Uh, the problem is that that headline is a complete lie. You'll see that after that headline, the article starts by saying that the teenagers were sentenced for terrorism in activities including plotting to blow up a virtual building in Minecraft. They were actually arrested in June 2020 for hanging up political leaflets on the building that included such slogans as, The FSB is the main terrorist. And they were supporting an anarchist who had been in jail. 
They were arrested for this, and the authorities went through their phones and found videos of them creating Molotov cocktails and videos of them recreating the building in Minecraft and blowing it up. They were not arrested for blowing up the building in Minecraft. They were sentenced to several years in prison, and, and don't get me wrong, this is obviously terrible and a huge infraction of people's rights and free speech, and Russia is terrible. But it's not the haha -ha funny that everyone thinks be because Minecraft is involved. That, that's just like not what happened. What is funny is that one of their mothers said this, I always knew where he was, he being her son, even when they were making these bombs. But it was a small, childish prank. A child's bomb. That's how hardcore Russia is. Our final story of the day was shared with me by Amateur Welder on Twitter. If you want to share a story with me to be featured on Weekend Weird, you can DM me or at me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin. And if you don't want to do that because Twitter is cancer, you can just le leave a like on this video and subscribe because, because that helps out too. NPR reports. The Portland Pickles need your help finding their stolen mascot, Dylan T. Pickle. We don't relish in telling you this, but it's kind of a big dill. The Portland Pickles baseball team says their beloved mascot, Dylan T. Pickle, has been stolen and are seeking the public's help in bringing him home safe. Now we're actually going to have to back up, because that's not where the story started in earnest. The story started when they shipped the uh, pickle mascot suit to the Dominican Republic for an appearance in a baseball game. On their way home, they obviously had to pack up the mascot costume uh, in luggage to be shipped, and uh, the airport lost it. They lost the mascot. stressed multiple times that the whole thing wasn't just a prank gone sour, because Dylan the Pickle has a reputation for hijinks. And that is true, if you look at Dylan the Pickle's- how is it Dylan the Pickle's? If you look at Dylan the Pickle's Twitter page, you'll see that um, it's, it's just like every other corporate page, it's full of memes and funny edits to try to get attention. New phone who dis? He's just- he's just giving a, a thumbs up, guys. What's the problem? So this was Dylan the Pickle's uh, Twitter account's response to uh, finding out that their mascot was lost. <laughs> Current status, mishandled file created. So the Portland Pickle started tweeting out, Please help us? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Dylan got lost on his flight back from the Dominican Republic. His phone is going straight to voicemail, at Delta. Yes, we're serious. Why did you tag other airlines? Where is Dylan? <laughs> We know we joke around a lot, but seriously, Delta, our luggage containing our mascot is lost and we are concerned. Now, if you're worried about Dylan T. Pickle, don't worry. They did find him. Does the T stand for tickle? No, it stands for the. <laughs> a very disappointing twist. Dylan was found by Delta and delivered to our office after hours with no notification. At 4.58 AM, this person stole him off the front porch. This is turned from a mistake by Delta into a crime. This man just grabs the- just grabs the luggage. In case you think that this is also a prank done by the PR team of this Twitter account and their- their baseball pickle mascot, they did actually file a police report, uh, which means that if they're lying, then that- that- that's a- that's a serious crime. So this is legit. Someone actually stole this pickle costume. Press F in the chat for uh, the for the man in the pickle suit. Since then, they've obviously been memeing it up. They have their other pickle mascot hanging up missing posters for the costume. And they've also tried to make a reward for people who find him, including contacting brands who are donating stuff. For example, they contact Manscaped and they said that they can donate a lawnmower 4.0, aka ball trimmer. Good for pickle maintenance. Uh, so if you find the costume, you're gonna get some rewards. Apparently it's a thousand dollars in value. This includes some football tickets, some bourbon, a hat. I promise to keep you updated on this pickle story as it develops. 
Our final story of the day is an update on something I talked about a couple weeks ago, that being Draw a Spurt Day. Voting is closed and Spurt has announced the official winner, and I saved it for last because it's one of those stories that the kitties shouldn't necessarily see. The winner was at the DI68 on Twitter, and this was their submission. Now, this is obviously a very uh, classy piece of artwork. It's referencing the classic literary masterpiece Gulliver's Travels, and that makes this high art. Look at how they capture the, uh, the pure, raw, naked form of Spirit's booty. And as you might have guessed from the art style, uh, this person is an NSFW artist on Twitter. They actually have <laughs> themselves in Spirit as their Twitter banner. This is the most appropriate picture I could find on their Twitter to, to show their normal art style. Me and Spirit actually made a video where we went over all the submissions, and I will be linking that in the description. I've known Spurt for a long time, and even though I'm a little salty that my submission for the contest, Chudzo, didn't win, um, I, I, I'm just glad that his competition is growing every year, and hopefully next year it'll be even bigger. Thank you for watching, I have links to all of these stories in the description, as well as a link to my Patreon if you want to support the channel. For every dollar I make there, I'll go a whole day without ever showing you Two Hat Mikey again. <laughs>